I could do this all day. <laughs> Look at that screen just quivering. Screen is just quivering. Sunny morning on Devil's Lake. It looks like we got about a foot of snow right here on top of the ice. And then today where we're sitting, it's roughly 16 and a half inches here. 16 and a half close to 17. Drop my Vexilar in and see if we can find a fish. Go to my favorite starter bait, a rattle spoon. Clam makes a good rattle spoon, Northland, JR's, they're all good. What do you got there, Tommy? I'm gonna hook this minnow right through the beak. I'm gonna pinch off about right behind his gills. We're going to drop down and see what we can do. Right here we're sitting in roughly, looks like almost 30 foot of water. We're out in the main lake. Not really seeing anything on the screen right now, but not to say they're not there. I like to drop down to the bottom first, stir up the mud a little bit, then I'll come up a foot maybe above the bottom. And then with the rattle spoon, you gotta always keep it moving, it's very important. And it's pretty vigorous too, to get the rattle to uh, actually sound down there. And with the snow cover now, uh, the light is it, it not penetrating quite as well, uh, so this rattle rattle spoon seems to draw the fish in from a greater distance, and it is definitely my go-to starter bait. And then if they seem real finicky, maybe I'll downsize to a like a small tungsten jig with worms, or maybe a gens worm, something like that. Usually I'll spend about, I don't like to run and gun just a minute, two minutes. I like to stay there for a little bit, four or five minutes at least. Uh, you could be sitting within feet of a big pot of fish and to get them to move over underneath you, it takes just a little bit. But I think a lot of people miss the boat by drilling a hole uh, dropping the Vexilar, not seeing anything, and then taking off right away. Oh, you, have, then you, got a you have to give it a little time. Oh, yeah. Myself, it depends. Uh, there's so many variables. Weather, uh, sunny day, cloudy day, uh, barometric pressure, full moon, no moon. Uh, a day like today, I mean, it's just bluebird skies, sunny, and I tend to go deeper. Um, and I like, personally, um, I'll follow a contour. Uh, just for example, say here I'm, I'm, on a, I'm in the flats here on about 30 foot. If I locate fish, then I'll, I'll tend to stick to that contour. Um, now, if I'm scouting for fish, I might start... Earlier in the morning, I'll start shallower, like anywhere from 10 to 20 foot. Then as the sun comes up, I'll increasingly go deeper and deeper and deeper. And then uh, once I locate fish, it's basically, like you said, it, it could be an X pattern. It could be a football field. It could be 25, 30, 35, step up, 35, 30, 25. Uh, every day is a little bit different. We're very fortunate here on Devil's Lake, there's so much structure. 
sometimes it's just very important to uh, know where the uh, the trees are, the sunken uh, trees, the rock fields. Uh, that's that's a great asset when you start to learn where those areas are. Now this area here doesn't seem to be working for me, so I'm going to pick up and move slightly deeper. Quite a bit of snow here. Ah, no, not bad. About 10 inches of snow. And actually, the ice is going to be. Oh, this is good. We gained a little bit. Uh, sitting on about 17 and a half here. So, happy days. Hi, guys. I see you down there. What would you like to eat this morning? Long ways down to this spot. We're uh, just off the edge into the main basin in the main lake. If we could wake up one of these guys. Oh yeah, they're hungry today. Oh, swing and a miss. I got excited. That felt like he possibly got my minnow head. We're gonna have to check here in a minute if they don't react to it. Definitely got my minnow head. I can just tell by the way the fish are reacting. There it is. We're gonna rebait. With the cold snap we had, I always feel this is a good option to go out deep because the deeper fish aren't susceptible to uh, the barometric pressure changes as a shallow, shallow water fish. Uh, it doesn't seem to affect them as much. All right, let's go back down there and see if we can get one now. Yep. Feels like, a, if I had to guess, a medium yellow perch. And in deep water, too, I like the... Uh, you get the extended fight head shake versus a shallow fish. Uh, I'm fine. That's all right. Oh, nope. Looks like we have a little walleye here. A little walleye action. Yeah, nice keeper walleye. If I had to guess, maybe 14, 15 inches. Right on. Slightly deep water here, so I think we're probably going to keep this and maybe give it to one of our customers who's having kind of a hard day today. And we're going to drop back down, see if we can get one of those perch. There's probably, by the looks of it, there's about 18, 18 inches of uh, rock rubble underneath me on this spot. Um, the true bottom is right here. Oh, actually, I just went in between some rocks. There's true bottom. And I'm now going to pick up myself right there for bottom. So it looks like maybe 18 inches of rock rubble. Could be an old shoreline. It could be just about anything. Got a little slush. Got Timmy here. <laughs> Something like this too, I might have to just try to switch over to a smaller tungsten with uh, worms. Seems like uh, some fish uh, perch, one day they're a meat eater and one day they're a more of a worm eater. Every day is different. If they don't like the minnow head or the live minnow, then try some whack worms or uh, your larvae, maggots. There's a ton of them down there right now. They just don't seem to want to bite. All right, I'm coming into auto zoom now. 
about five foot from the bottom, four foot. I'm going to stop here about a foot off the bottom, foot and a half. Give her a couple shakes. Here they come. Ooh, they're rifling up. Here they come. Coming up, coming up. There you go, right there. <laughs> that was fun. This feels like a good one here, buddy. Look at there. Kind of a tangle up mess, but we got him in. There you go. Mr. Waldo. Another nice, nice walleye. I love that it just looks mean, doesn't he? Prehistoric looking fish. That's a good eater. Yep, perfect size. Feels like it might be another walleye. Nope, we got a medium perch. Little devils like gold. Yep, that's a nice little medium perch. There's a real strong year class of these now. A uh, pretty good chunk of meat on these fish. They're very, very healthy from all the freshwater shrimp that they eat. We're going to let that one go and look for a slightly bigger perch. Seems like that was the ticket. They came right after that gold tungsten right away. Back down. I'm I'm also a firm believer of uh, a braided, no stretch line versus a monofilament here at Devil's Lake. Uh, one would be most of the fish here have teeth. Or gill rakers, which can snap your monofilament fairly quick. And also just the no stretch factor. Deeper water, um, monofilament, uh, you, your feel for the bite uh, just isn't the same as a no stretch line. Uh, that no stretch line, when you get that bite, it's translated to your pole and your fingers right now. And the hook set also. Uh, it's a shorter hook set with the uh, no stretch line. You wouldn't have to set your pole all the way up through the roof with, like if you were using a monofilament. As I got this bite, the uh, I got the fish up about four or five feet. And the, the screen just exploded, so there's probably a pretty good little group of perch down there. All right, we got another group of fish coming up here. Same spot. I'm kind of considering uh, possibly getting a house out here in a minute. It comes coming up. Oh, there it is. Oh, this feels like a pretty good one here. Coming up. You got some good head shakes to them. Yeah, Stuck in the transducer a little bit. Oh, yeah, that's a better one there. There's a nice perch. Beautiful fish. Love the orange fins. Nice yellow color. Super fat and healthy. This would be a good one here to keep, roughly a foot long. We'll keep him. We'll give that to a happy, happy customer. I think we're going to possibly get a house here. That's a head thumper. I believe this is going to be one of my favorite little Devil's Lake specials. A little bit. Look at 
right there. Pretty fish, isn't it? Well, this this is a head shaker here. Oh, this thing is a white bass, isn't it? What do we have? Fight me to the bitter end, buddy. Double knife, I'll get this one up for you. There you go. <laughs> There's a nice Devil's Lake Eater walleye. Deep water too. This is probably looks to be about 48 foot of water. So the the nice walleye seem to roam in this area too. Looks like when this one was small, he possibly had a northern that took a chomp out of him. So he was very lucky to get this big. That's a beautiful size fish there. That's perfect. Any bigger, uh, myself, I would like to release. But that's about, about ideal for a uh, devil's lake for, for an eating fish. Ooh, we got a screen full now. That felt like a waxworm stealing little guy, that one.